I get used to this live streaming thing. Hey, good morning, everyone in the Western Hemisphere. This is Steve. Um, so today we're going to talk about mobile data. So data you can either get from a smartphone or from a MiFi device or from a dedicated 4G router. And how feasible or practical is that for use in a small office? And I'm really excited about this. I'm going to talk about the different options you have and definitely the cost because as a business owner, <laughs> money matters, right? Groceries aren't free, so money always matters. And, uh, and also I've got the, the chat open and I'm open to a little bit of Q&A and uh, uh, you can kind of take this any direction we want to go because I think what I have to present isn't going to take much more than about maybe 10 minutes. So anyway, so let's get started. Uh, I've got a slideshow I made, so let me go share that uh, here and um, share a screen. I'm going to share this screen right here. Okay. Oh, okay. So small office and mobile data. So what are your options? So you can use anything as simple as just putting a smartphone into a uh, hotspot mode. And that's okay if it's just you and you don't need to connect a bunch of other things. Uh, maybe if it's you and somebody else or maybe even a third person all just kind of using Wi-Fi laptops. Uh, you can get dedicated devices for this. They're called MiFi devices. Uh, Verizon uh, makes one called the Jetpack. Uh, almost all the carriers have some version of a MiFi device out there. They're nothing. Uh, they're not unusual. Uh, they're okay again for small groups or light, you know, light internet needs. Uh, the downside about both the the well, we'll get into the downsides in a minute, but but you need to be close to them. Now, what I do when I need to have a mobile office uh, is I take a cradle point. So, and I'll show you one of those. I actually got one here on my desk I'm going to show you. And it's a nice way of sharing a hotspot or, or some other 4G connection and distribute it the way you would across a normal network. So, not just Wi-Fi. It's actually got hardwired connections to it. Then lastly is a dedicated 4G modem. So, and you might be saying, well, what's the difference between, you know, like a cradle point and a dedicated 4G modem? Well, cradle point is a router and they have the ability to put 4G SIM cards in them, um, but they also can be just used as plain old routers and you can either externally tether a 4G phone to them, or you can just connect just a regular old, uh, you know, like cable modem or uh, I, or like a DSL. So they got some flexibility there, but we'll talk about those as I go through these slides a little bit. So let's let's start with the beginning, smartphone hotspot or MiFi. You know, so you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, I already have a cell phone bill that I get every month, and I've already got a bill I get for cable internet or DSL. Why don't I just shut the hardwired ISP provider off and go with a full-time, you know, just, just mobile data connection. And believe me, I've thought about that a lot of times. And of course, if you go look around the internet, you'll see that's, that's not something unusual that people have considered. Um, and if you have an unlimited plan, it probably will work, but here's the downside. Uh, for one thing, it's not, it's not real easy to have non-computer type devices on there. Uh, if you think about things like printers or if you have IP cameras or other IP internet connected devices that don't have Wi-Fi, although a lot of print, to be fair, a lot of printers and some IP cameras now have Wi-Fi, but, but for things that don't have Wi-Fi, you need that hardwired connection and a smartphone in a hotspot mode or, or even a MiFi jetpack. Um, although I do think they, I think they have some of those that actually come with an ethernet connection now, uh, but, but otherwise, you know, Wi-Fi won't cut it. And so that's one of the things to consider. The other problem you get into is that, you know, depending on where you're going to be within a dwelling, whether that be an office or whether it be a, uh, um, you know, your home, where you have to work and where that MiFi or, or, or phone in the hotspot mode is going to be, have to be kind of close to each other. So if you're, say, for instance, working in the basement, which is common for a lot of people who live in the northern half of, uh, of North America, you know, you've got to have that phone next to you. Well, the reception may not be that great down there. Conversely, we talk about like the, the 4G modem and, and the cradle point. You can actually have those things actually separated by quite a bit of distance, which allows you to, to, to solve that reception problem. 
And then the other problem you get into is if, if it's your individual phone and you're powering your laptop and you're sharing that same hotspot connection with a couple of uh, couple other users, you run into the problem of if you need to use the phone or if you need to take the phone and go somewhere else to talk on it because you need privacy, that may interrupt the connection. Now, in theory, they should be able to handle a phone call and provide the hotspot connectivity at the same time. In reality, doesn't always hold up that well. And the last thing to think about, and this is a really an important one, is the throttling. So if you're not familiar with what throttling is, what throttling is, is when the, um, the phone has used up a data to a certain point that it no longer allows you to have full speed access. Um, if you just do a quick internet search on like Verizon throttling or T-Mobile throttling, you'll see what I'm talking about. Typically, like for phone usage, like on Verizon's unlimited plan, once you have reached about 22 gig for the month, they will kick in these throttles. And what it does is it puts a governor on the amount of data that you can pull at your speed. It slows down your speed. Um, and then the rules are different depending on whether you're using it for phone or whether you're using it for, for mobile hotspot. I'll talk about that a little bit further down. All right, so throttling is definitely something that, that is a limitation on these two ideas. All right, um, <clears throat> so let's talk about the cradle points. Let me shut off my, my, uh, my sharing for a second and I'll go back to the camera and show you something. All right, this is a cradle point router. So it's got regular plain old switch ports on the front. It's got a spot for the ISP modem to plug in. But on the back, it's also got these uh, USB ports. And then they even make a module, a whole slide-in module that fits on here that you can put 4G cards in. So if I were going to use this, and well, I, and I do, um, what I do is I take a USB to, uh, to USB-C, or sometimes it's known as a, a, I think they sometimes call it a Thunderbolt connector. And I put the USB into my into the USB port in the back. I take my phone, my smartphone, and I put it into what they call a tether mode. So I go into the phone under settings, under network, um, and there's a thing there where you can see uh, mobile data or mobile networks, and you can put it into tethering mode. I put it in tethering mode, and I connect it. All right, so once I got these two things connected like this and the phone's in tethering mode, now what's happening is the 4G data is flowing from my phone through the cable to the cradle point, and then these are my switch ports, which go out to the computers. So the big advantage here over, say, for instance, the hotspot phone or the MiFi device is now I've, I've gotten rid of the proximity problem. Remember I said before your phone or hotspot needs to be near wherever you are. Well, now I can leave this somewhere where, where the phone gets good reception, say maybe like in a, in a second floor window or, or near a second floor window. And then I can connect this stuff to my network infrastructure. So i.e. cables that lead to other computers in different parts of the small office or home office. And, um, and it allows me to distribute the signal to, you know, the internet connection to several different places all at the same time. Whereas remember with the hotspot of the MiFi device, my users have to be pretty close to that device. They physically have to be near it. But in this type of solution, I've solved that problem. So I typically do the cradle point when I travel. The other thing too is, uh, is I don't really know how to explain this and I don't really have good scientific evidence to back it up or, or, or you know hard facts, but it seems like the internet connection behaves in a more stable manner when I run it this way, as opposed to just taking the phone all by itself, putting it in the hotspot mode and then just letting it sit there you know, as a, as a Wi-Fi access point. So that's the cradle point. The other thing that's kind of cool with the cradle point is, is you can actually, I'm not advocating cradle points. I certainly don't have any skin in the game. Um, to use these, where see the blue port there? That can be your full-time hardwired connection. And then your cell phone, you can just leave this kind of set up ready to go. And if the internet goes out, you know, and you lose your, your hardwired connection, say from AT&T or Comcast or whatever, you can just take and come connect your phone to the cable on the back, put your phone in tether mode, and then let the let your office run off the off the backup, you know, this as a backup connection until the uh, until the internet is, is restored. All right, so let's go back to my slides. I hope I don't make them disappear this time. All right, so uh, so the cradle board is still kind of in that affordable 
you know, you're still just using your cell phone's data plan. Um, you can get used cradle points for, I don't see them for like 70, 80, maybe a hundred dollars. Uh, again, I'm not pushing cradle point. There's other 4G capable routers out there. It's just one that I'm the most familiar with. It's also pretty easy to set up too. I mean, pretty much the default settings pretty much will work out of the box. Um, and then, you know, another advantage is, like I said, you can you can put the unit wherever it needs to be to get the best reception. Um, if you use that add-on module that I was talking about, you can even connect external antennas, uh, which I used to do a lot when I was doing field work, uh, was, was put antennas um, in different places to increase the, uh, the signal. All right, might be a little bit of setup. And again, you're still battling that throttle problem, you know, because again, you're still using that hotspot or tethered data, which can be affected by the by your ISPs, the throttling policies. Now, lastly, is the 4G modem. And, uh, and, and then when we get done with this, I'm going to take you around on some other tabs I've got open here on the browser and show you some of these things. But a 4G modem is, is instead of a router, it's just a device that a 4G card sits in and it just has one port and it provides a uh, dedicated uh, an inter internet connection. Um, and depending on the plan, could be unlimited or might be, you know, limited. Um, and the data could get expensive depending on how much you consume. Let me take a look at one of those. Um, where's the, um, is it this one? Yeah, this one right here. So Netgear has a nice one of these. Uh, this is pretty affordable too. I've seen these, um, I've seen these on eBay for about 125 US. And it's, it, it, I know it looks like a router. It's actually not, it's really, it's just a modem. Um, does it have a picture of the back? Let me see if I can find one with a picture of the back. Because if it's basically just got one or two ports on the back. Uh, here we go. You can see the back. See, it's just got one port. So what happens is there's a little slot. You can't quite see it uh, somewhere in here where the, where the 4G card goes on, where the SIM card goes in. And then there's internet comes out of here. It's just one IP address. You put that into a router and then that becomes your get your dedicated network mo i mean your isp modem so think if you've got like a modem from from comcast or spectrum or something like that today this would replace that um, or you could use this as a backup if you wanted all right so also while we're looking at things let's go take a look at the MiFi devices so this is a verizon jetpack there's lots of different MiFi devices out there this is just one and again, I want to remind you, everything I'm showing you, I got no particular interest in, no conflict of interest, not pushing any one of these. I'm just showing you some examples. Um, and, you know, these are moderately affordable. These are the brand new prices. You can get these used on eBay for like less than $100 easily. Um, but you have, to, you have to get a plan. And this is true with a lot of these devices. And let's take a look at the plans. Um, oh, can I not? Can you just move that for me, please? Uh, I don't know if you can see behind that, but basically the, the $80 uh, plan is, is for 4G. Um, can you see it? What I wanted to show you without having to start a new session was that is that you're limited to 15 gigs of data. And so because of that, depending on what you use, yeah, see, all that's gone now. Great. Thanks, Verizon. Um, depending on what you use your internet connection for, that either may be fine or you may blow it through it. You may blow through it pretty fast. All right. So let's go back to my slides. I'm going to talk about my last page, which is which is basically the the uh, the considerations. If all your office is doing is email, some light Internet browsing, you're not streaming videos, you're not doing Zoom meetings, you're not doing video conference calls. You could probably be fine with these 15 gig or 22 gig, or I think even, I think uh, T-Mobile even has a 50 gig uh, throttling policy where you, your first 50 gig is unthrottled on an unlimited plan. You'd probably be fine. Um, so you need to ask yourself, what are we doing? Are we doing, uh, you know, video, video meetings or streaming content? If the answer is yes, you're going to go through that video pretty, if you go through that data pretty quickly. Here's something to think about. If you do a Zoom call, you know, Zoom meeting with a video on, you are burning roughly between maybe if you're lucky, only half a gig per hour, but probably more likely somewhere in the neighborhood of one to one and a half gigs per hour. Well, if you have a 20 gig plan and you have 15 meetings, you know, 15 one hour meetings in a month, all the data is gone. All right. So that's something to think about. 
On the other hand, certain things like voice over IP or VoIP, they don't use that much data. They, they're, you know, even though it's a streaming telephone conversation, they're actually pretty light on data. So you could probably run your phones on there all day long and not really make much of a dent in your data. And then do you transfer large files? Like, are you in a business of transferring large, I don't know, video files or, or, or you know, uh, uh, software files? Then that's going to, you know, something you got to think about. If you're moving those data files around like that, you're going to use up the data faster. All right. Also, you need to be aware about the tethered and, and, and hotspot mode rules. So uh, shut up the sharing for a second. Thinking about your unlimited cell phone plans. So let's let's pretend here for a minute. Well, not to pretend. This is this is my Verizon phone. It's unlimited data, ostensibly unlimited data, and it is uh, basically the first 22 gigs per month is full speed. After the 22 gig limit is hit, it slows down. It goes into throttle mode. Um, if, however, I use this as a mobile hotspot or as a tethered device, then that threshold drops from 22 down to 15. All right. So just because you have an unlimited plan that says, oh, you can do, you know, unlimited data, be careful if you've also elected for the tethering or the hotspot modes, which are usually things you have to ask to have turned on. The rules may be different for those. All right. That's what I wanted to present to you. Let's go take a look at the chat and see if anybody has anything they want to Share. Wow, chat's kind of quiet. Maybe the chat's not being shared out. So, all right, let's see here. I'll say hi again, see if anybody's got anything to say. Any questions, comments? All right, quiet bunch today. All right. Well, this is a fun topic for me. I'd love to talk about it. And I'll tell you why. I started getting excited about this back in, like, Gosh, the late 90s, I remember the first time I connected my laptop to my cell phone. It was a libretto laptop, a Pentium 1, connected it to my StarTac, my Motorola StarTac. I think the speed was beyond. But the fact that I could go somewhere and didn't have to be connected to, to, to a hardwired modem in some building, I just thought that was the cat's meow. And um, and then, of course, obviously, it got better and better from there. I remember when uh, when uh, 3G came out. Oh, my God, 3G. It was great. We were, we were really, really rocking at that point. Now, I personally have not experienced 5G yet. Um, I, I From everything I've been reading and hearing, it's, it's an absolute game changer. Um, but uh, but I haven't uh, I haven't actually used it yet. So chat room is quiet. Let's see. Is there anybody watching today? Yeah, it's got some people watching. Just not nobody has much to say today. Okay, well, that's fine. Well, maybe maybe we'll we'll shift gears here and and uh, and uh, talk a little bit more about. Um, oh, you know what? I know we can talk about. Let's talk about the Cradle Point. So one of the things I want to tell you about the Cradle Point that I really love, and I don't have one of these handy because I've actually got it in use on my other uh, my other uh, Cradle Point behind me is they make a module which goes on the back here. And in the module, there's these little spots where you can put a 4G card. And so you, you connect this module, it's got the 4G SIM card in it. So it's basically, it's a modem that bolts onto here, but it's got these three little ports on the back that you can connect external antennas to, and you can even get boosters. And that's one of the things that's really cool about the cradle points. And I used to see a lot of these in the field, and that's why I'm kind of you know uh, have an affinity for them because I'm just very familiar with them. But you can take and say, for instance, put this in the server room, which may not have the greatest reception, but then you can have a 50 foot cable that goes to an antenna that can leave the server room, go up to the roof of the building. And if you're gonna put it outside, you gotta think about lightning protection too. And you can even put like, a, like an RF gain amplifier on it. So that's really one of the reasons I'm crazy about uh, cradle points. The other thing too is that they're designed to be used as inline, meaning that you've got your normal hardwired ISP going into this little blue port here. So you would use that 99% of the time, but in the event that it would go down, their cradle point would sense that and then would flip on the 4G SIM card in the modem back here that is connected. And then that would be your connection until it sensed 
that this had come up. And then it's got some rules around how it decides when to, to make the switch back. Usually it checks for um, a certain amount of stability in the connection. And then once it determines that, okay, yeah, it's the, the hardwired connection's back up and it's been up for X amount of time, shuts off the 4G and puts you back on the, uh, on the hardwired connection. So anyway, check the chat. Any questions in the chat? No, nobody has much to say today. All right, that's fair, that's fair. I was hoping we'd get into a conversation because it's kind of a fun topic for me, but all right. Um, well, I guess maybe I'll wrap it up um, about eight minutes early, but if there's no questions or nothing much else to discuss, I do plan on making some more videos about this particular topic um, just because I think it's, it's pretty relevant to a lot of us who are in this work from home mode now because, you know, we work from home as long as we're home, but then when we have to go somewhere else, we got to bring that connectivity with us. And unfortunately, sometimes grandma's internet or the hotel internet is not the best. And so sometimes it makes more sense to, to bring our own bandwidth along with us. So, all right. Oh, and Felix says, hi, I'm just listening. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for at least letting me know that you're out there. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up and then I'll edit this in, in a few days and post it back up there as a, as a video for anyone to come out, come and see. And, uh, Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.